Hello and welcome to another video. Today's custom budget PC is built into this repurposed Antec PC case. A fairly basic case, but does have some features that allow some customization and relative performance. The front I.O. has two times USB 3.0, a microphone and headphone jack. On the front of the case, there's four punch outs for expansion. And the side panel has this grill for some passive air cooling. A case like this doesn't have a lot of paths to route cable management, but I did the best I could to make sure the case fans are unencumbered by cables, and they're kind of neatly tucked away behind this hard drive cage here. Underneath this Thermal Ride Assassin Spear V2 CPU cooler, there's an Intel Core i5-10400F CPU with 6 cores and 12 threads. Beside that is 16 gigabytes of 3200MHz Type-Tech RAM without heat sinks. And this would be a Sapphire Radeon RX 6600 graphics card with 8GB of GDDR6 memory. A compact but very capable GPU. And this is packed onto an ASRock H410M-HDV motherboard. No frills, no gimmicks. One nice feature is that we have an available short PCIe lane above the graphics card for expansion cards or Wi-Fi card. Bring it all is this Thermaltake 600W Smart Series power supply. For storage, there's a 512GB 2.5-inch Timetech solid-state drive. And for additional storage, I just threw in this Western Digital 160GB hard drive. For airflow, there's a 120mm air intake fan and a 120mm air exhaust fan. This is a fairly basic cooling setup, but you'll see in the gaming performance that it's actually pretty much all we need. Coming from a budget PC building perspective, I'm actually really happy with this PC case. The rear I.O. on the motherboard features some display ports that you can't utilize with this version of the i5 because there's no integrated graphics. There's a mouse and keyboard PS2 port, 4x USB 2.0, 2x USB 3.2, RJ45 Ethernet port, audio jacks, and the graphics card features 1x HDMI 2.1 and 3x DisplayPort 1.4a. I didn't mention this before, but it's actually called Sapphire Pulse Radeon RX 6600. And on the SSD, we have Windows 11 Pro installed. And now let's check out the video rendering and video encoding performance. So DaVinci Resolve 19 is loaded up with my usual 11 minutes of raw 1080p footage. And I chose these settings here. Let's see how long it takes to render. And we're clocking in at 3 minutes and 53 seconds. In comparison to the much more competitive 5600X, we can see that there's almost a minute of difference. And just about 40 seconds between two generations of i5s, even though the 11600KF does have a better clock speed. Overall, I don't really mind those results, that's not that bad at all. It definitely shows the i5-10400F as more of a general consumer level CPU, but still very capable. Handbrake is loaded up now to test out video encoding, and I picked Creator 1080p60 as a preset, and we're utilizing solely the CPU this time around, so let's see how long this one takes. And we're finishing up in 4 minutes and 22 seconds. Out of 8 PC builds since September 30th of this year, that is the longest time followed closely by the Xeon CPU and a Lenovo workstation. So that's not too bad for the casual user, but for productivity, let's see how well it performs with, with GPU as the main encoder. And we've modified the settings, let's see how long this one takes. 1 minute and 5 seconds. So we can see that the clear choice is utilizing the RX 6600 over raw CPU power, but this gives you a fictional scenario of how long it would take if you're only able to rely on CPU. And now it's on to the gaming performance examples. Thanks a lot for checking out my video. If you're using a setup like this in 2024, definitely let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day.